contract. Somebody's looked at our contract and they didn't like our contract. And so I'm going to address the various things in general terms because it's kind of an important point, important topic. So let's talk about specifically what the complaints were about our contract. Number one, the contract states that it's, if there's any issues, it's going to be upheld by the, the law of Oklahoma. I think any contract that you look at, it's always going to be in the place where the contract, you know, the, the, the article was bought, whether it's something you're buying from a store or a puppy, it's always going to be in, this, in the local state where that puppy was purchased. Um, second one is that um, if the dog got pie, well, it required, we required two vets in the case of an issue, we want two opinions. Well, you know, the problem here is that vets get things wrong, they notoriously get things wrong. And so to ask for a second opinion, I think is more than reasonable. And that's why that's in our contract. I, and I would recommend that we have it in your contracts. Third one is that they talk specifically about pyometria. If the dog had pyometria and the dog couldn't be bred, well, look, that our contracts last for one year. You're not breeding a dog at one year or less old. Uh, and pyometria would not be covered by it anyway because pyometria is typically caused by introduction of bacteria during the AI process is, is not a hereditary factor. So it wouldn't cover pyometria anyway. Um, and then a third, the, the, the other comment was you know, that the, the, uh, the contract is in favor of us. Well, look, I mean, what do you expect? I mean, anytime that a contract is written, it's written by the person selling the product and consequently it tends to favor them. It's absolutely normal. But remember, you can always negotiate a contract. If there's things in a contract that you don't like, have a discussion about it and explain what you don't like about it and what you think an alternative, better option would be for both parties and, and try to get around that. And if you can't get around it as a sticking point, then, then go somewhere else. I mean, that's always the thing about it. But here's the important part. You say it doesn't have any teeth for the buyer, but it does. That's what contracts do. Contracts are there to protect both parties in the event that things go wrong. Look, somebody gets a puppy from us, it's all great, everybody's happy, the contract's never even an issue. The contract becomes an issue when things go wrong. So you know, you've got to put yourself in a situation where you think that you're being treated fairly. And certainly in a lot of contracts that might not be the case. I mean, certainly our policy is is to you know earn in the in the favor of making everybody happy, particularly the person who's buying the dog. So we don't. We've had situations where we we've have not stuck to the letter of our contract and been more in favor of the buyer because we want them to be happy. And there'd be you know extraordinary circumstances. But again, any contract is an opening statement about what you both parties are prepared to do in the event that things go wrong, and they are always negotiable. It doesn't mean that you're going to get what you want out of it. It means that you may part company and never do a transaction, but a contract is there as an opening statement to say, this is what we expect from you, this is what you expect from us, and in the event that things go wrong, this is what we're gonna do. So there you go, thanks. Great, great, great comment though, and I'm, you know, I, I, it's a good opportunity to, to, to talk about this, because it's important to all of you, whether it's stud contracts, whether you're selling a puppy, whether you're buying a puppy, whether you're buying an older dog, or buying anything of any significance, a contract is a good thing to have and to understand what it means, and in a form that you can accept. So someone's asking about Duclaw removal, Clayton Alvarado, what age can you do this? Uh, three to five days is preferable. You can do it later up to a week, but don't wait too no, long because- Don't wait a week. Yeah, weeks weeks are borderline. Um, after that, it's, it's you gotta wait till they're five months old and have surgery done. And it's just, a, you don't really wanna go there. But if you get it done in that first three to five days, it's trivial, it's easy, it's relatively painless. Send the DNA right. off and get your DNA back in about seven days. Um, okay. Uh, new shade. I talked about new shades and uh, said two copies of Isabella. I don't know why we made that statement. You're right, it is redundant. You, you wouldn't say two copies of Isabella. No. You, you'd say the dog is an Isabella. Which means that Testable dog would be Tesla chocolate and blue. Rojo. Yeah, it would be Isabella. So, um, so, whoops. Um, does the K or elastic mask cause any color variations? Well, when you say K, if you mean brindle, absolutely, brindle. brindle. KBR wire. Yeah, KB, KBR wide. Yeah. Mucks up tan K points K completely. Because yeah. you got KY. KY is no not brindle. brindle. That's what you want. Yeah, KY, right. KY. Yeah. 
um, but KBRY and KB is what you need to say for Brindle. Yep. But KYKY is no Brindle. Someone says, Sims Rodriguez, beautiful dogs, what food do you feed them? Well, life's abundance. It's available at my breed of Adult and, and puppy. Adult puppy. Yep. And then in adults, you get to choose which flavor. Talking about swimmer puppies and flat chest puppies and putting tape on it. The Adventures of Papa Bully says, I wish I could keep the tape on her. She's squirming. I tried three types of tape, including electric. She managed to get them all off okay. within moments. She's only five weeks old. Well, so, yeah. Started a little bit earlier. I did build a narrow box run for her. That seems to work, keeping her legs in, but she can walk. Uh, well, I mean, I would, it's the first thing is that five weeks are a bit late on this. So that's part of the problem is, is, you know, you should really be doing this at about three, three and a half weeks. Just keep putting the tape on. I mean, it's, uh, it's, uh, never has not worked for us. So sticky tape. Um, <clears throat> Brian Martinez, can you tube feed newborn puppies? Or do they have to be a couple of days old? No, you can, you can tube, tube feed newborn puppies, but typically, you know, so, first thing is the question is, you know, why are you feed, feeding puppies when they're literally born? How do you know that mum's milk fails? They don't need milk for four or five hours anyway, so... Because you got a puppy that's way underweight. Yeah, so... Like yeah. six ounces. With or less, then yeah. You would. Yeah, but the answer is yes. There's no, there's, no, there's no point where you can't do this. But they need to have that colostrum first. You need if to you can get it, get the colostrum get from mum. Get them to get that colostrum first and then to feed. Right. Because you won't ever bit of that. Os, Os Demtal says, what about AW? We're talking about uh, color genetics in the A locus. The AW is the wolfy gene, the wolf gene, and it's not it's not in Frenchies, so I'm not very familiar with it. It's in other dogs. Um, but, uh, you know, it is, I believe, got to have two copies to express it. I'm pretty sure about that. So the AW gene, again, not present in Frenchies, but it is in other dogs, and it makes for the kind of the, the, the wolfy coloring. Uh, thou shalt not lie, says. Good one. Uh, thanks so much. I need a deworm medication for my cat. Um, I don't know about cats. I don't know what we don't worm our cats. Doesn't mean you shouldn't. I don't know what worm. Well, works we give them. We give them the uh, flea and tick stuff that does the worming. He does. Okay. Well, again. There, there's a certain kind you can get. Yeah. It's kind of like on dogs, too. Yeah, I'm sorry. Wrong channel for the... I mean, we love yeah. cats. Don't get us wrong. Yeah, we've got two cats. Yeah, we've got two cats, but we're not the people to ask about cat stuff because we just don't know. Uh, Audrey Toledo, please help. My dog's ears. He has a huge hematoma. Took it to the vet, gave me antibiotics. Told it. me to use a cone. Now it's rock solid, still big, but it's not squishy like before. Yeah, well. will. Um, and um, yeah, well, the problem is, is your vet didn't tell you the right thing. So what your vet did is your vet drained it, gave it some antibiotics, and put an Elizabethan collar on it. And so there you go. So there you go. After you and spent I, seventy after, dollars, well, probably hundred dollars, probably more like two hundred. Yeah, two hundred. Well, by the to time you buy the cone, well, you got to buy oh yeah, <laughs> kaching, we got this one. Kaching, kaching. We're not laughing because we no, we're, we're laughing. We've been we're, there. <laughs> yeah. we've been there, done that. So look, what you've got to do here is is. I don't know whether it's too late. If it's hard, it probably is. But what you gotta do is you gotta get that ear drained. And then you've got to get yourself a piece of uh, barrel from a dry eraser and wrap it tight around it so it doesn't fill back up again. And if she wants to scratch it off, put the Elizabethan collar back on. The antibiotics are there in case you get an infection. And hopefully you didn't get an infection and that's not the cause of this whole thing. What's happened is, and she's, she had a, maybe an ear infection, she shook her head like crazy, bust her ear on something, caused the hematoma, filled up with blood, and you have, you drained it, but you didn't stop it from refilling up. So, you know, the next step is to, uh, is to uh, get it drained. And if it's gone hard on you, probably not happening. And will it calm down and go away? Maybe, maybe. maybe. Watching the, the video. Uh, I really appreciate people who subscribe to me. It helps me, encourage me to do more of these videos. But do remember, disclaimer here, I am not a vet. I'm not a licensed medical professional. I'm purely a person who's been breeding dogs for the last couple of decades. Any information that you got from this video, use at your own risk. There's nothing implied here. And certainly this is, should not be used as a substitute for advice from your veterinarian or your medical professional. I hope you enjoyed the video. Come back for more of them. Bye. Thank you.